Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's current affairs class. I hope all of you are aware of the live schedule for RBS Abhiyan Abad and about our mobile application. So let's quickly begin with our question number uh, one, which is the central government has created exclusive benches to deal with cases above 100 crores of debts recovery tribunals in Chennai, Mumbai and Delhi to get more focus on high value cases. How many debt recovery tribunals are operational in India in October 2022? So this is the question and guys, the same question was asked in this year's RBI grade B examination where the number of total debt recovery tribunals were asked. So this is a very important question. Now, how many DRTs operate in India? So a total of 39 DRTs operate in India. Now what is the debt recovery tribunals? Clearly from the name itself, they are for the resolution of the cases related to debt and their recovery. But whose debt are we recovering through these tribunals? So if you want to know the answer, you first need to know the act under which these tribunals and the appellate bodies were instituted. So here guys, the name of the act is recovery of debt due to banks and financial institutions act of 1993. So under this act, the debt recovery tribunals and appellate bodies were created. So clearly it is for the resolution of the debts of banks and financial institutions. So I hope we are clear till here. So the very first statement is about the news. So the news is that the central government has established three benches at the three debt tribunal, debt recovery tribunals, which are located at Chennai, Mumbai and Delhi. Now these specific benches are going to look at the cases which are valued at rupees 100 crores or above so that the high valued cases can, can be resolved at a quicker pace. Now there are 39 debt recovery tribunals and 5 debt recovery appellate tribunals. Now you need to know where are these 5 appellate tribunals located because the number is very minuscule. Only 5 appellate tribunals are there in India. So obviously the location of them can be asked in the examination, particularly in your RBS Abhiyan Nabad exam. Moving ahead to the second question, where will the Durgavati Tiger Reserve be developed? So here guys, Madhya Pradesh is the right answer. So this Durgavati Tiger Reserve, it is going to be developed in Madhya Pradesh and it will be Madhya Pradesh fourth Tiger Reserve. Okay. So this is an important fact. Now this Tiger Reserve will take care of the tigers which are at present uh, st uh, staying in the Panna Tiger Reserve because this Panna Tiger Reserve is being submerged due to the linking of Ken Betwa River. Okay, so I hope you know about this interlinking project and even if you don't know about it, I'm going to tell you about that. But first, I hope you have understood this statement. It is basically saying that all the tigers which were residing in the Panna Tiger Reserve, they are basically sh being shifted to the new tiger reserve that is Durgavati tiger reserve. Okay, this much is clear. Now we have a total of 56 tiger reserves in India, including the Durgavati. Okay. Now, guys, this Ken Betwa River. So, Ken is a river, uh, Ken and Betwa, both these rivers flow in Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. These two rivers will be interlinked and their courts will be shifted to Bundelkhand region because Bundelkhand is the region, is the highland which is shared by both the states, UP and Madhya Pradesh and that is the driest region. So in order to provide water in that driest region of both the states, the Kent and Betwa rivers will be interlinked and their a new courts will be created for the river but that does not mean that the existing course of these rivers will be changed okay obviously the water distribution will definitely change but the course of these rivers will not get changed okay for example ken is this river and betwa is this river so 
in this manner the bo both the rivers will be cre uh, connected they will be interlinked so that the water of both these rivers can be shared okay and then the canal will be created so that the water can be provided in the bundelkhand region as well okay but does this mean that the existing course of kan and betwa river has changed no the now 56 tiger reserves are there and in this year only we have these tiger reserves which were created newly so first is guru ghasidas national park and the mor pingla wildlife sanctuary which is one tiger reserve in chatisgarh suna beda tiger reserve in odisha male maha mahadeshwara hills in karnataka so these are the three tiger reserves created newly in 2022 Okay. The question number three is: How much MSP has been decided for uh, wheat for the Rabi marketing season of twenty twenty three to twenty twenty four? So here, two hundred, two thousand, one hundred twenty five rupees per quintal has been uh, selected as the MSP for wheat. So basically, the MSP for six crop has been increased. First is wheat. so the current msp is this i hope you are able to see it and if this is too much blur i am going to read out the amounts okay so you can note down the amounts or otherwise you will definitely get the pdf of this video and i have already provided that on the telegram channel so you can download it from there also so you can take a look at the amounts from the pdf as well otherwise i am saying it here loud so you can remember it also so for barley The amount is one thousand seven hundred thirty-five. For gram, the amount is five hundred five thousand three hundred thirty-five. For lentil, for masoor, lentil में काफी सारी crops आती हैं, but here we have raised the amount for masoor only. So for masoor it is six thousand. For rap seed and mustard it is four five thousand four hundred fifty. For sunflower it is five thousand six hundred and fifty. Okay. Now there would be a question whether you need to remember all these amounts. Your examination is near Nawad walo ka to hai hi phase two, so then yes. But in case you don't have any examination coming in the coming months, then you can clearly skip it because MSPs tend to change. Now I hope all of you are remember that all of you remember this fact that there are twenty three crops for which the MSP uh, MSP is decided. so basically for twenty two crops MSP is decided and for one crop that is sugar cane. FRP, fair and remunerative prices given. Now, which agency under the Ministry of Agriculture decides the MSP for the crops? Okay, so I am asking you the agency that you need to tell me. So basically, the agency recommends the prices, and then the Union Cabinet approves the prices of the MSP. So you need to tell me the name of that agency. Okay, the question number four is. Which of the following statements uh, aptly describes Project Zorawar of the Indian Army? So here you can clearly the five uh, clearly see the five big statement. The right answer here is option B. The Project Zorawar of Indian Army aims to procure the light weight tanks so that they can be carried from one place to another place. especially at the high altitudes at the conflict prone zones okay because we know that india pakistan border and Ch india china border so both of these borders are actually located on very high hills okay at a very high altitude so there it is very necessary to procure such lightweight tanks which can be lifted from uh, with the help of the helicopters and they can be placed from one place to another place usually what happens with tanks that they are very heavy they cannot be lifted with the help of the helicopters or any other carrier vehicle they cannot be uh, transported but these lightweight vehicles these lightweight tanks are eliminating that problem okay so that is the basic idea at present indian army has t72 and t90 tanks which are really heavy in nature they cannot be lifted easily but the lightweight tanks can be easily lifted Okay, so here, Rosboron export. 
which is a aerospace and defense company of russia it will offer its sprut sdm1 okay this is a light amphibious combat vehicle so amphibious says that means it can operate on water as well as on land and it can be shifted with the help of ship as well because it is amphibious okay so ship say it can be transported from one place to another it can be transported with the help of the helicopter as well so tanks can be deployed in the situations of emergency very quickly if they are light in weight now the project is for project zorabar and the which indian army is procuring the lightweight tanks and i have already informed you that at present indian army has very heavy tanks t72 and t90 okay now one more point that i want to highlight here is that the procurement has not been confirmed it will just offer it. do remember this fact okay now we are talking about india and russia so there is one very very famous project of india and russia that is the brahmos air uh brahmos cruise missile so these are the nuclear capable cruise missiles recently brahmos aerospace has signed the agreement with philippines to export these nuclear capable cruise missiles to the island nation okay so this is a very very big achievement for india because india has been traditionally an importer of defense equipments now we are assuming the role of an exporter as well theek okay? hai so this point is very important do remember it's the first deal signed with philippines now one more fact that with the uh, the brahmos aerospace is planning to export these missiles by 2025 so the amount of the missiles would be dollar 5 billion so this is the target which brahmos aerospace has set for itself as far as the export of these missiles are concerned on that note you are going to tell me what is the total defense export target of the government of india okay this is a very important question to tell now we are talking about brahmos aerospace so i hope all of you remember that brahmos aerospace is a joint venture between india and russia india holds 50.5% stake uh sorry 51.5% stake in the brahmos and the remaining stake is held by russia okay so this i have already explained to you and this is the sprut sdm1 uh, tank which we were talking about the next question is again related to defense so what is the theme of the def expo 2022 so the theme is path to pride so def expo is one of the flagship events uh, organized by the ministry of defense to exhibit the products the defense equipments so 12th edition of it has been organized at ahmedabad and gandhinagar the main location is gandhinagar the theme is path to pride and it is for the first time that states and union territories are also setting up their pavilion to show the uh, innovation that they have done in the field of weapons okay so that's the uh, first that is for the first time at the exhibition second edition of india africa defense dialogue was also organized and this dialogue basically enables the communication between indian defense ministry as well as the ministry of various african nations okay so that's the discussion kind of a fourth okay question number 6 is what is the scope of uh, score of haryana uh the top ranked in the public affairs index of 2022 so here guys haryana is the top ranker in this index public affairs index and the right answer is 6948 okay first of all guys the public affairs index is released by a private think tank which is the public affairs center which is based in bangalore okay so do remember this fact and this uh, this index is not very prominent or i should say that this index was not very prominent until it assumed frequency so this index is very frequent you can say or uh, uh, it is very punctual it is released annually so that is why it has hold 
a very special place in your examination syllabus so do prepare this index as well now what is the, uh, the thing that you need to prepare from this index first of all the categories in which it divides the states large and small but remember union territories are not counted union territories have been excluded okay because it uh, manages or it basically assesses the public affairs the social economic and political delivery uh, the justice delivery and the union territories are directly under the administration of the center except for the three union territories delhi puducherry and jammu kashmir right now the jammu kashmir is also under the le central government's legislation but still union territories ko exclude kiya gaya so which states are included 18 large states and 10 small states theek okay? hai now ranking so haryana is at first followed by tamil nadu third is kerala top 3 then karnataka is six now why karnataka is important because it is a bangalore based think tank okay that's why karnataka is important 16th is maharashtra west bengal and jharkhand is at the 18th position small states mein sikkim is first himachal pradesh and uttarakhand okay these are the top three the next question is which multilateral organization is a signatory to the indus water treaty of 1960 so here this you can assume as a static question as well as a current question as well because recently there is a news related to the indus water, water treaty but this treaty is very important therefore you need to remember it background information as well now coming to the signatories so world bank guys is the signatory of this treaty apart from india and pakistan so there are three parties india pakistan and world bank okay world bank is acting as a mediator in this treaty so that the dispute which ran for 9 years before this treaty was signed can be resolved so what is the news now before understanding the news we need to understand the dispute exactly otherwise news samajhna mushkil hoga okay so guys first of all understand this point that whenever we divide or decide the direction of the river we look at from the perspective or from the position of the mouth of the river the mouth of the river is a place where it drains into the sea so this is the mouth from here onwards it uh, goes into the arabian sea obviously this is not the exact mouth it goes down also but we are for our understanding looking at from this point so consider is as the mouth of indus so if i am standing here and i draw a straight line theek hai so the rivers which are falling in that direction these rivers are the western rivers and the rivers which are falling in this direction these rivers are the eastern rivers okay because i am seeing it from this perspective okay so the north is this the south is this and west and east have changed for me because i am standing here i am looking from this area i hope this much is clear now when we are seeing it from this perspective so understand this point that indus jhelum and chenab are under the administration of india so india has a power on the western rivers of the indus system theek hai pakistan has the power on the okay on the eastern rivers right now what is the meaning of power the meaning of power is that the allocation of water the dis, uh, the how much water will be used by which country that is decided by the country which is in charge of that river okay so you can understand it in that manner so india is the in charge of these three rivers indus jhelum and chenab and both india and pakistan have decided to distribute a certain uh, million acres of water okay so this much water is being used by pakistan of these three rivers and pakistan has also allowed india to use certain amount of water of these three rivers i hope this much is clear now what is the dispute the dispute is that india has created a dam on jhelum river so this dam is the kishan ganga dam 
So this is a dam as well as a hydroelectric project as well as the Ratli Dam on Chenabri. So what has happened? All of you must be knowing this fact that hydroelectric power projects need the dam to be constructed and when the dam is created, so it has the potential to stop the water from draining to the other part of the dam. Okay. So if India thinks like because Pakistan is thinking in that manner, agar India chahe, to kabhi bhi Pakistan ka power rok sakta hai, pani ka supply rok sakta hai. So that is why Pakistan wants the technical details of both these plants. Technical details, technical information of these hydroelectric power pl plants and how can India share it with any country or is this to QE karing? So that's the basic dispute. Now, in order to resolve that dispute, World Bank has appointed a neutral, uh, you can say jury, a neutral person as well as a new member to the court of arbitration. And that is the news. I hope this much is clear. Now let's discuss the news. So World Bank has appointed Michael Lino as the neutral expert and Cian Murphy as the chairman of the court of arbitration to resolve this dispute. Okay. So in this water treaty came into effect in 1960 and it facilitates the information sharing regarding the rivers and that is why Pakistan is demanding the, um, the information of the power plants. So I have already explained to you the dispute. Now Kishan Ganga power station is being built on the Kishan Ganga river, which is a tributary of the Jhelum river, right? And rightly hydroelectric power project is being developed on the Chenab. And we have already understood the dynamics. Now this I have already told you that the Eastern river Satlaj, Piyas and Ravi are under the authority of Pakistan. Thus Pakistan allows India 33 million acres feet of water to be used unrestricted unrestrictedly. Okay? Whereas the Western rivers, Indus, Jhelum, and Chenab are under the authority of India. Therefore, India allows Pakistan to use this much uh, water uh, unrestrictedly without any restrictions. Okay, so that is the basic idea. Now, ye amount se rakhna zaruri nahi hai. The quantity is not important for you to remember. Question number eight is, who has won the Bell and Dior um, 2022 award in women's category? So guys, it is Alexia Putless who has won this award. Okay. Men's Bell and Dior, Women's Bell and Dior and Club of the Year. These three categories are important. Okay. The other categories are not that important. So men's has been won by Karim Benzema from France, Real Madrid, he plays. Women Ballon d'Or, uh, Alexia, Spain, FC Barcelona is the football club for which she plays. Club of the year is Manchester City, England. Question number nine is, who is the author of 2022 Booker Prize winning novel, The Seven Moons of the Mali Almeida? So here, Shehan Kurun, uh, Karuna Tilaka is the right name. I, am, I hope I am pronouncing it right. It is a Sri Lankan name. So he belongs to Sri Lanka and this novel is based on the Sri Lankan civil war. Okay. So the seven moons of Mali Almeida is a Sri Lankan novel. Okay. By a Sri Lankan author set in the background of the Sri Lankan civil war between the Sinhalas and the Tamils. The last question is who has authored a confused mind story book? So Sahil, Sahil Seth is the right answer. He is an IRS officer. And what's the speciality of this book? It was presented to the Union Health Minister Mansuk Mandapia. So that's important. So you just need to remember the name of the book as well as its author. So here guys, this session ends. I hope you have enjoyed the session. If you find anything to discuss with me, you can mention it, uh, it in the comment section below. Thank you so much. And just wait for a second. I just remember there was a comment by Nilesh Suryavanshi in my yesterday's video where he pointed out that World Bank has changed its poverty line to dollar 2.15 per day. But guys, understand that in the multidimensional poverty index that we discussed yesterday, the limit taken was dollar 
zero per day. Okay, so this limit was considered by the UN when it composed the Global Multidimensional Index. However, the limit has been recently changed by the World Bank. So this is the new limit, and I thank Nilesh Suryavanshi for highlighting this fact. And uh, this is the benefit for all of you guys. Now understand that this limit has been set on 2017 prices. Okay, 2017 prices have been kept as the base price to, to decide this poverty line for the entire globe, for the international standards. Okay, I hope we are clear at it. So on that note, let me say a goodbye to all of you. Thank you so much guys. And in this way, you have feedbacks and whatever you don't know about your feedbacks. प्लीज मेंशन कीजिए कमेंट सेक्शन में सो दैट आई टेक अप एंड वी डिस्कस इट बिकॉज आप लोगों के डाउट्स भी बहुत लोगों के लिए नई चीजें क्लियर करेंगे राइट सो डू मेंशन इट कीप लर्निंग थैंक यू सो मच